So we're rolling. I am here um, at the BBC Three Counties studios. I'm about to talk to Gareth Lloyd. Quite excited about this. Um, so, Gareth, he, he does a lot. He presents... <laughs> he's right here. He presents BBC Introducing. He is a sound engineer. He's a producer. He, he plays the drums. He's a snowboarder. I didn't tell. I'm going to tell him about my. How did my you know about that? How did you know about that? <laughs> he knows everything. I've done my research. <laughs> Let me tell you about my first snowboard time afterwards. You know what happened? First time snowboarding. I thought I was a bit rubbish, as all beginners are. But you know what happened? The snowboard was bust. No. Yeah, no. and so all the snow went in the ridge. I switched the snowboard over. I was like a pro after a few <laughs> days. Down those slopes. <laughs> So anyway, enough about snowboarding. It's not snowboard quest here. But um, I can't wait to chat to him. And um, here we go. Thank you very much for talking pleasure. to me. Pleasure, absolute pleasure. Um, so let's begin by just tell tell me a bit about why you began the drums and what what attracted you to the instrument in the first place. I was at middle school. I was at Ashton Middle School, which is from where we are at the radio station in Dunstable. It's just the school, the other side of the park here. Um, and it was year five, so I was about eight or nine years old, and we were all allowed to choose a musical instrument. And so many people were choosing the violin, and, and I just wasn't... I wasn't getting any vibes from it at all. I just wasn't enjoying it. Uh, we were all given one to try in class. And I, and I just thought that the drums was such an interesting instrument. Um, I'd seen so many great drummers. I'd seen, you know, that guy at the back of a, a band on the TV that just seemed to be, in a way, although the front man's, the, the front man is the front man, I just, I don't know, I had this feeling that the drummer was more important, was key, was actually... Was the cool was, one. Was the, yes, the, the one who was actually in charge of what was happening on that stage. And they are, and that's the, that's the great thing about being a drummer. Uh, subtle changes just by you know playing in front of the beat, just by playing behind the beat, can, can change the style or the feel of a song totally. And I think that's and that's that's the really cool thing. That although the front man thinks they're the big guy, the guitarist get all, gets all the solos. Solos. I, I I really believe that the drummer has this this subtle control over the band that no other instrument does within within rock bands, uh, orchestras, uh, concert bands, jazz bands. I think the drummer is 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 really key, and, and that just really got me hooked on drumming. I had some amazing teachers over the years, some yeah. and some brilliant teachers teaching me different styles, and just the more I learned about the instrument, the more I got hooked by it. It was really a brilliant, it. yeah, loved it. You see, I came to it later. I wish I'd have began earlier, but it's never too late. That's no, what I totally, totally. Um, so yeah, what uh, up until this point, what would be your kind of best drumming moment or? funniest drumming moment or something that you remember oh gosh um i've had so many moments i mean so so i um joined uh, bedfordshire youth uh, music that's a big uh, operation in bedfordshire um it has orchestras bands jazz bands so by the age of 21 i had already toured most of europe with wow. the with the youth orchestras the youth bands um and and it's just such an experience to be going abroad at such a young age, playing in such great concert venues. And, and this wasn't kind of the rock drumming that I, I do mainly now. This was more orchestral stuff and, and big brass bands. But still, to be travelling Europe on coaches, you know, with equipment in the back. I mean, there's, on tour? The, yeah, it's that just... At that age. age, it's just brilliant. I mean, where there's been times where we've uh, we've had instruments stuck in customs, we've had instruments, a uh, big bass drum uh, got stuck in the x-ray machine at uh, Malta Airport, oh, so we had to run into the machine to dislodge it. We've had, um, what else has been, I, I was playing once at the Royal Albert Hall, and wow. I'd, I'd gelled my hair, I was going through this phase of really high hair, big, big high hair, and I put so much gel on it, and for some reason, I'd, I don't know whether I was wearing something, you know, quite a thick, you know, outfit or whatever we were wearing, but I, I was getting hotter and hotter. And the cheap green gel, you know, the stuff you can buy for like the yes. TV, that I was going through that stage. And it started for, pouring down my forehead and started then getting in my eyes. So I played most of this gig with, with green gel stinging my eyes. Oh my, could, so I'm, could I'm, you see I'm, it I'm as well? <laughs> you know, this, this great moment at the Royal Albert Hall, when I, I want to see out and look at all my friends and family that were there. And I'm, 
blinded by this cheap green gel. So there's been, you know, great times like that. But yeah, I mean, just being having the chance to, you know, play in so many different places is is why um, uh, outside of my BBC work, outside yeah. of, of of the radio and the drumming in in you know theatre and shows that I do, um, I teach for Luton. So I'm, I'm a music okay. teacher in the Luton Music Service. So like the Bedfordshire Music Service where I uh, grew up in, um, I teach. We have uh, I, I conduct a big band on a on a Saturday. Are you I, um, like Whiplash? A little. Are you, yeah. Yes. <laughs> You're dragging. Uh, You're rushing. Uh, and um, and uh, I work with the concert band on a Tuesday night, and I work with the orchestra on a Wednesday night. And I just see that as kind of my chance to, you know, turn the cards and all that experience I got and all those chances I got. Yeah. Um, you know, travelling with the with the the, the, the gigging and the playing that I did as a as a kid. It's nice to be able to be working with children now that are getting those same um, chances. So it's it's kind of it's nice now to see what the teachers were going through when I was a pupil and and seeing how much effort it takes but how much joy you get from those kids doing their performances doing their concerts and so it's, it's and it's, do you feel sorry for your teacher your <laughs> teachers <laughs> totally do you have sympathy now oh what when, i put you through when we go when we go on tour now with the the younger kids uh, myself and one of my other uh, colleagues our brass tutor simon and um, we say to the kids hey anything anything you think you're about to do on tour we know what you're planning <laughs> we <laughs> were that. we were those kids many years ago that's so, so but yeah that and that's great you know i do the the drumming with bands and i do the drumming in theatre and, and I, I love all that but the teaching you know the children you know and, That's and, your passion. And I love it absolutely love it and, and then throwing the radio side of stuff that I get to do as well just it's a crazy crazy world it's busy <laughs> it certainly is busy um so yeah coming on for, I mean you're a teacher you're a drumming teacher and um so when kids say you know what what can I do this is leading on to my question what is it that you think makes a good drama ultimately and how would how would you define Gosh. what being a I know it's such yeah. a such a question or what does it mean to you I had uh, a number of teachers that I really, really would ne never have got where I am without them. My first, my first ever teacher uh, was a guy called Graham Hosker in the in the schools around the area. Um, then I went off and did some drumming with a guy called Simon Edgoose, who works for Yamaha and Zildjian now, and he tours the world demoing products. Um, I had another teacher um, called um, well, well, his name at the moment, his his brand is Doctor Spoons. This guy called Richard. Um, he was from the Dunstable area. He now is over in Europe drumming all the time. And then I had this amazing chap called Freddie Wells who sadly um, has uh, passed away a couple of years ago but a real old boy such such a such a genuinely nice man and just amazing at um, teaching me groove and feel and all of those teachers looking back over you know Simon and Richard and Graham and and, and, and Freddie yeah the dots are important yes the, the the manuscript the music you're given is important I'm, I'm not gonna say it's not but the feel the feel yeah. is is more important and I can see it today I've got kids uh, that say they've got their grade four got their grade five in these drumming exams well all they all they learnt to do was play that one piece of paper they were given the you know the music yeah. for the exam they they can play it and they can play it brilliantly but then you sit down and you just ask them to just feel through a, a track and they don't feel when the next eight bars is coming. They don't feel the next 16 bar loop. They don't feel that at the end of bar seven or the end of bar 15, this naturally feels like it's gonna be a fill. They, they just, yes. and that I think is where my teachers really worked hard, just playing along to tracks, just playing, just feeling stuff and, 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 and just the, the ability to know where a piece of music might be going. Conversely, I love when I hear a piece of music or play a piece of music and it's not going anywhere, I think. You know, you, you presume at the end of this 16 bars there's gonna be a chorus or something like that yeah. and it doesn't come. And I love that, that surprise. But I think for beginning to be a drummer, for learning to, to drum, just feel, just that natural feel, or, or, and just being so tight with a with a click. It, yeah. it, those, I think, are, are are more important than being able to read the dots. So yeah, anyone that, can be taught to read the dots. That's I think. such a good point because um, you know someone said to me recently. They they said you know I don't know if it's the same for bass players, but it was like the Ten Commandments of drumming. Thou shalt not mess with the groove. Thou shalt not mess <laughs> with the groove. I think they're the ten, and basically it's. But that's the thing, it's, you can learn, you know, a piece of music or even playing along to your, your track, but then you're put in a live situation mm. and it's so different. My, and, you that's know. exactly right. My lessons, uh, my, my practicing, my lessons would be uh, 
a uh, load of time doing rudiments, you know, just warming up, getting the sticking, getting fast with sticking, getting getting rudiments over four do you limbs. Still do, that now? still do rudiments now. Still do rudiments and how, now. And how? What is your pra- when you're about to? Because I find that really interesting. What is your? Pra- do you do five minutes of say paradiddle just to get warmed up? No, I I, I do. Um, I do anything wherever it, it takes me. I'm sitting in the car. There's a pair of sticks in the car. I'm sitting bored at home. I'm sitting in the office at the BBC. You know, and suddenly my hands will be just going through some rudiments. Just, yeah. I think if you sit down at a drum kit and you're going, right, now I must do 10 minutes of rudiments, <laughs> that'll be the person that stops doing rudiments. That'll be the person. I think you've got to be able to make it part of enjoying percussion and drumming and do it on... Uh, the steering uh, wheel. Yes, do it on anything. When you're stationary, yes, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, yes, you know, sitting on a snare drum doing it for hours will will muscle memory you'll get faster and quicker but it'll be boring it'll be so boring make it interesting play rudiments around the drum kit start using your limbs to actually play the rudiments the the paradiddle don't do it with your hands do it with your legs things like that or put put a pulse with your legs as you're doing it with your hands just find ways to make rudiments interesting but but i find by doing it not as part of practice by doing it everywhere else then it's not my practice. It's not this, oh, I've got to sit down and do my rudiments. And, and I, I, I try and play along to any CD, any new CD I get, any any tracks I find on, you know, download. I just drum along to them. It's just yeah. a nice way to warm up. I warm up like that as well. Pick You're any CD, and it can be any type of music. You know, one minute I could be, uh, in, you know, playing along to a, a great uh, jazz CD. The next it could be a, a, a theatre show tunes, you know, a, a musical. And the next it could be a great rock album or something like that. And, and I change it every every day. You know, I'll just grab another CD and play along to it. And I, that helped build this groove and this feel. And it's it's that that feel inside someone that 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 primeval you know yeah. rhythm i think the beating of the heart is 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 the key to drumming isn't it and it and, and it is it's it is primitive and it is very i mean uh, probably people that play other instruments would say well you know music it's all about feel but i think yeah it's the beat and it's and <laughs> there is something very grounding about mm. it but again that could be extended to a lot of music. But I've sat in drum circles for hours and not realised the time has flown past. Just just solid pulses, just playing around with the pulse. And and after a while in these drum circles, you start finding that you handed the solo over to someone else and you didn't realise, you, you know, that we weren't even talking to one another, there was no eye contact, but it just felt right that that person then picked up the solo or then did something else and the and the beat changed. And that's a really weird thing. These drum circles are really powerful things that, where people are communicating on a, on a, on a different level with Without having yeah. to, you know, conduct in the bar and say now it's your solo and things like that, it just happens when the right and people are together. And I guess you could say that about rock bands and, and pop bands. You know, when when it's right, it's just right. You and know, we're and in the zone, feeling off each other. Feeling off totally, totally feeling off one another. Actually, yeah, that that it leads me on because with the BBC introducing, I did want to ask you this mm. as well. You know what make what makes a good band? Oh man, the the <laughs> hardest question ever. I've been um, doing introducing. We're now on this autumn. Um, we've now done ten years of unsigned music in Beds, Hearts and Bucks. Wow. So the amount of bands that have come through these doors, you know, some brilliant artists like the big names like James Bay, uh, Jack Garrett, you know, found yeah. because they sent their music to this program, this radio station. Uh, they sent us their music. We've got some new guys coming along who we were so excited about. And and, and then you look at all the other introducings across the UK that have popped up over the ten years because we were one of the first with the guys up at, at Northampton and Nottingham. And you, you find people like uh, Florence and the Machine, uh, Riz Kicks, um, Jake Bug, and, and uh, you, you know, were all introducing finds as well in their parts of the country, and and it's it's such an an amazing part of the BBC that what we're wanting to do is nurture homegrown talent and and there's there's no gains for us in it we're not you know some record label that are now going to rinse people for pennies or tv programs that will remain nameless and 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 make people cry and you know and yeah. sell themselves on the the sob story and, and the people crying bbc introducing is about finding great artists people upload their music and that's how it works so like if you can do Facebook or Twitter, you can do introducing. You go online, you find the website, you upload your music. It asks you a few things, name, email, website, and it also asks for your postcode. And by putting in the postcode, it knows where to send it across the country. So if you put in a Liverpool postcode, it sends it to the presenter of BBC Merseyside. If you put in a, a Bedfordshire, Hertfordshire or Buckinghamshire postcode, it sends it to me. And then we listen to it and... 
if we think it's got what it takes, we play it on Saturday night. If we think it's really special, we'll work so hard to get the guys at Radio 1 listening to it. Radio wow. 2, 6 Music, 1 Extra, the Asian Network. Radio 3 want to start playing more world music and jazz music. So uh, the World Service do a show once a month about BBC introducing. So from this local grounds roots le- ground roots level, we then feed up. And then there's the stages, Glastonbury, Reading and Leeds, Tea in the Park, One Big Weekend, that all have BBC introducing stages. And we're asked every year, who do we think should should be playing on these stages and that's you know we will work so hard to support the bands but uh, that, was, that was a bit of a tangent wasn't it going no, back to your it's question so, it's so interesting yeah yeah but it's so interesting because what a vehicle and mm. and how how fortunate to have it <laughs> you know um and, and and how fortunate i am to be part of it because totally. to be sent such amazing music every day. Most probably, whilst we're having this chat, there'll be three or four already on my email. And, and, and if I go away on holiday for a week, God help me, because the amount of music we're getting by such great artists is... Do you ever, do you ever think, well, I, I want to be in your band. I, I, <laughs> I want to I drum for you. You're so good that I just, you know... When the, when the acts come in on a Saturday night, I always say, uh, have you thought about a percussionist? You yes. know, when, when their drummer's sitting opposite me, I go, yeah, have you thought about percussion? I could put tambourine in. Yeah. <laughs> Anything's good. Um, yeah, I, and I've percussion. played with some actually we've had some bands over the years that um, their drummer's dropped out for a gig or we've done an introducing stage and their drummer's not available um, and I've gone look I, I want you to be part of it I want your band to be part of this festival this stage this event whatever we're doing and I've done it a couple of times actually you know gone for a crash couple of days of rehearsing with them and because I wanted the band to be there and um, and if I can do anything to make them get I play percussion with bands there's pictures of me shaking tambourines or playing congas you know to a couple of bands because their percussionist was unavailable because it's so important that these bands get the exposure and just because their drummer was unavailable on that one day that shouldn't stop them playing for us at whatever festival we were doing whatever we recording we were doing but um it's it's tricky because so much music is coming through our door and it's yeah. not just me i've got a, a couple of great producers uh, boy danny and girl danny who are amazing and then we have a load of volunteers on the saturday night who come in and we spend an hour or two before the show going through the uploader and listening to the tracks and then during the show they help with all the social media and and the amount of bands coming in and the live bands we get playing on the show in the live room which is which is next door um but I, I'm keen for everyone to be listening, not just me, because there are things I'm going to like and there are things I'm going to not like. Um, but I think over the years I've learnt to appreciate even the music I don't like, even the style, the genres I don't like. I think I've now learnt over the 10 years of doing introducing when it's still very good, when it's yeah. still beautifully written. And, and, I, and I'm going to be careful not to say beautifully produced because... Um, it doesn't need to be. We can make it sound great in here. The band yes. can come in here and play great. It's that key core, you know, if it's got the lyrics, if it's got, you know, the feel. Um, Jake Bugg's original track he sent to BBC Introducing um, sounded not great. You know, you know the, the quality, the recording quality. But you could, was, you could hear, you could see, excuse, you know, see is not the right word, but you could see you could, yeah, in yeah. it. He had, the, on that recording that we all still listen to from time to time, wow. he had amazing lyrics, there was such passion in his voice, and, and beautiful guitar. Now, even though it may have been recorded on an iPhone, yeah. you know, that didn't matter. The team, the team that found Jake Bugg's, you know, original, as he sent it to introducing, could hear that that was just something really special. So, it must be uh, pleased. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm not going to say that to, to send a track to us, it must be the most highly polished thing ever. Yeah, it helps. You know, it's yeah. easier for us to play straight out on the radio. But we're listening for, for real emotion, talent, love something new not just following the genre of, of what radio one are playing at the moment we uh, the team we've got enough you know people in the team to hear when that track when there's something special there and i think that's that's key to not just write it off because it's a bit crackly it was recorded on a, a dodgy microphone we can we're interested in deeper than that the lyrics the artist the passion the the the, the tightness of the band you know are these guys you know actually playing together or have they just come you know come together to to knock out a tune or have they actually worked and and you know practiced their skill and and we we listen and we listen and we listen and we find some amazing stuff and and wow. it's such a such a privilege to, to be I doing that tell, job. Like, the way you're talking about it it's just you know what a thing though to to discover new talent any any people that are 
any people? Can you give us a heads up oh, on man. who's coming up? I don't want to see this is this is this is the next problem we've got at the moment. We've got record labels now listening to us on a Saturday night, listening to who we have in the studio, listening to who we've got coming in uh, with us. And then they're following them. They're chasing up after them. They're getting in contact with them and trying to steal them. So I'm. Oh, I mean, I mean, um, uh, who's who's recent? The uh, Tom Grennan is an amazing guy. He's from Bedford. Um, he has just done the vocals on Chasing Status's new song. Um, but on his own, he is an amazing guitarist. He is just. Um, super and we've had him play a couple of times live for us and to have his vocals being you know wanted by Chasing States for their you know latest recording he did a brilliant Radio 1 Live Lounge with them a couple of days ago so uh, he's one we're really really excited about um, oh gosh there's loads there's the band The Walls are great um, yeah. we've um, we've uh, had some real fun times with Chasing uh, uh, ch ch Chasing Cadence um, I'm trying to think who else I could go from my phone and just listen you list you um, hundreds hundreds of them um, ten tons a brand new uh, solo um, male from Hertfordshire he's just awesome oh I'm gonna forget people then I know, people gonna be I angry. Know. Don't worry. why no, didn't you mention uh, I know you can't when you're put on the spot yeah. and asked you know <laughs> uh, we, we can do if you, if you remember anyone we can come I'll give you a that. massive list we'll just have a <laughs> list going on the screen <laughs> that, yeah, that sounds good that sounds good um, so I've lost my track now um, if you personally could drum for anyone in the world right mm. so it's your dinner party this is the dinner party question anyone gosh who would it be i, I have and not and i'll give them a call after yeah this and tell and them and it, tell yeah. them i have not i think it'd be i i think it would be some of the you know the 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 greats of um our time i think that just the the musicality the groove just to be in company of you know some a, a great musician i would i'd be looking at playing with oh paul mccartney i think yeah. just an amazing experience just to be with someone like that um i stevie wonder you know to be in that band that's one of the tightest bands you know when, when i saw them live this summer just that's a, a, a tight band i i think i'd be looking at you know i <sighs> What, would I say Dave Grohl? But then I know he'd be looking at me. I know, I know, <laughs> I, I know he'd then know what I'm doing wrong. Um, That's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've, you've got a front man that was also yeah. a drummer. Um, I think people like that. I, I think because just of their of their history, their knowledge, their musicianship, that they they're the type of people I'd be interested in. You know, my dream, my dream gig. But I love it. I, that's you know. So we'll have you doing a Paul McCartney gig. Off to Stevie Wonder. In a helicopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. That's the only way. That's the and only then way. Jet to grow. <laughs> um, okay, that that's a great question. That's a great answer, I should say. Um, and finally, you did answer it slightly. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give to learner drummers like me, people that you teach, like like a something that we or any musician, but you know, obviously this is focusing on the drums. But what should I hold dear? What should they hold dear? What piece of advice do you wish that you had that you, I, you could give? I'm a bit of a gearhead. So I, I spend a lot of money and I constantly... Um, there's um, Mapex uh, drums and uh, Peisty cymbals have been very good to me and they look after me. Martin, I got up a Mapex. Yeah, I, got a, I got a Mapex drum kit <laughs> and I got a Mapex Black Panther no, snare. Oh, beautiful. Which um, I love. They're looked after by Korg in the UK. And Martin um, up at Korg in Milton Keynes is very, very kind. And anything I ever need or any problems I run in or any gig where there's not a drum kit there for me, Martin um, uh, has looked after me there. And so I'm, But I'm such a gearhead that I'm always looking for what's new and, and wanting the next and wanting the next best thing and and I um, would suggest to anyone learning the drums or very new to the drums that most 99% of drums will sound fine if you know how to tune them right um, drum kit manufacturers are making you know drums better and better and better yeah you know a very expensive drum kit will be beautiful and sound better but the cheaper ones you know the bottom of the ranges from the guys like mapex yamaha pearl will still sound great mm -hmm. um and um people get worried about i need to spend more to make me sound better and, and that's absolute rubbish learn your instrument learn how it works learn how you can take it apart build it 
tune it, retune it, tune it, retune it, tune it, retune it. Because so many people come, you know, a, a trumpeter, a saxophone player, every day when they open their case, they have to build their instrument. You know, they, 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 they put it all together, the bits of a saxophone, the bits of a, uh, a clarinet, you know, they stick it all together and it works. They're learning the instrument every day. I have so many people who just don't know how to put up a cymbal stand right. Yeah. You know, uh, put up a hi hat right. Why is the bass drum pedal feeling a bit, a bit ropey? So I'd say my first piece of advice would be know that instrument, but you don't have to be spending the massive money and it'll make you sound better. No. You could be buying the cheapest instrument as long as you know how to tune it and care for your drums and how to you, you know, really look after them and know what that drum is doing at that moment in time, how it's reacting to how you set it up, how you play it. Because we should know what our equipment's doing. We totally. some, pe some people are so oblivious to what's going on when I hit that drum or what if I change this or what if I sat this way or what if I uh, you know, put a bit of time tuning Tuning my drum and, and oh it must be it must be because it's a cheap drum that it doesn't sound good no you just haven't learned how to tune properly such so, a basic thing and it's so true because I didn't know really anything about the instrument until I had to move it and mm. then obviously like the first time I moved it it took me half half an hour to put down I think an hour to put up and I thought right come on and now yeah. I can do it so quickly but yeah. if I didn't do that the, the, maybe I wouldn't have bothered unless you become world famous overnight you're going to be gigging 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 pub after pub after pub after club um, after uh, you know small venue and you'll be setting up packing down that drum kit every night and once a week something will go wrong so uh, a lug will come loose a screw will come loose I didn't pack this I forgot this and and if you've got no idea about that drum kit you're on your own you're going to be in trouble and and I would say so, so that's my first piece of advice know that drum kit inside out and learn how to tune it learn how to make it work for you and it doesn't matter if it's the cheapest or most expensive drum kit they will sound okay you yeah. know they will if you tune them right they'll sound fine my second piece of advice is listen and play and groove along to everything and anything you come in in contact with don't stick yourself in one genre don't say i'm just going to be a rock drummer or a pop drummer and never look at jazz and and, and never play in five four time or never try and swing a beat learn and and take something from everyone you 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 encounter everyone you see and play with as many bands play with as many teachers but you know that's why I had so many teachers because every single one of them could teach me a different style and teach me different things about them I had some really great lessons with Andrew Small who was um, um, Kylie Minogue's um, uh, uh, MD for a while on, on her tours wow. and just I mean I only had a few with him and, and but they were brilliant because I really took what being an MD of a band was was in, 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 important and just being in, in his presence was just just, uh, just it kind a, of rubs off on you it does a bit yeah. it does a bit just that and then you want to become more passionate and aim for higher and, and, and aim for more but but never turn down anything drum everything drum every style do every gig and just play along to cds and and you know these drumming books are great they are absolutely great but don't stick your head bury your head in the dots i mean yeah if you're going to be a session drummer the dots will come out and you'll have to be good at them but get the groove first, get the groove, get the feel, and be able to play any style. Because you'll find that styles interlink and cross, and you can take this idea from this style and mix it with this idea, and you've got a new beat that the band go, wow, that's what we wanted, because you're just taking all these ideas. You, as a teacher, I don't want to make little clones of me. All the pupils I teach, yeah. I don't want them to be, you know, 30, 40 of me because <laughs> then I'm putting me out of the job. I want yeah. them to then go and have another teacher or drum in another band and then get little bits of, of advice and help from everyone they encounter. And then they become their own drummer and their own person. And I think that's important because then they'll become a better drummer than me because they've got someone else's ideas and, and influences. And, and I think you should never, ever turn down any, any chance to play in, in any type of band orchestral music is so scary and you know you just, you wait for a hundred bars and play nothing and then you hit a triangle but it yes. it teaches you discipline you know brass band drumming is is so different but it teaches you something else and 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 you can bring those into into rock drumming into into pop drumming into funk in, into jazz and swing and i think that would be my second piece of advice say no to nothing i think to sum it up say no to be nothing. a yes yeah, man yeah. or a yes woman uh, play along and practice and, and play along to every cd you've got in your in your collection you, you'll just become a better drummer with that groove that that internal feel that internal that. rhythm that is great <laughs> gareth you have been amazing oh thank you high thank five you. come on let me feel those drummer hands there you go
Thank Sturdy you hands, so manly much. Hands. That is <laughs> nice. Nice one. No, pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so loved hearing all about that. Thank Can you. I just say thanks so much? Gareth Lloyd in the house. Well, uh, actually, I say should say Gareth Lloyd in the studio. Yes, Respect. Yes, yes. Thank you. High five. Oh, left handed. Drummer, drummer hands. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs>